there is no prayer in the morning and there is no verse they take what then throughout this day i'll pinch my life i will make my life to rest on this verse so that i will know god forced all through the day the bible falls all through the day the doctrines of the bible falls all through the day the teaching of the word of god falls all through the day my commitment to the lord all through the day my surrender unto the lord all through the day whatever challenge comes to me whatever decision i have to take i'm going to make pivot my life on this verse of scripture there's no time for that they only think of their body they only think of food and raiment and whatever and the shelter and there is nothing that talks about how wise they are in seeking the face of the lord but for you this year you think of your spirit and your soul as you are taking care of your body so that you say my spirit is false you know when you die that body will go to the grave and it is your spirit your soul that will go to god and that spirit is not being taken care of it's not being cleansed it's not being fed it's not being taken care of that's not wise this year spiritual things will be number one above materials physical things in jesus name if you are there and waiting for it to find amen. amen point number two pursuing the righteousness of the heavenly kingdom we're looking at uh, matthew chapter 6 Matthew chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, we're looking at verse 33. And you'll see what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying. It says, number one, settle your priority. Number two, settle your pursuit. Verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's what we'll be talking about, the priority. The number one thing in your life that Jesus Christ said, this is first. Now, number two, and his righteousness. And his righteousness. It says, this is what to seek. You have come into the kingdom, you are born again. Because I told you, the word of God tells us, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now you are born again, you have entered into the kingdom. And you put God first in your life. What's the next thing? What do you see? So that blessings will be added unto you. That is the pursuit of righteousness. And his righteousness. Pursuing the righteousness of his heavenly kingdom. We're looking at Zephaniah. Zephaniah. I hope you'll find that. Zephaniah. Look for it. I'll read it to you if I've not found it. It's Zephaniah chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 3. It says, Seek ye the Lord, all ye, the, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment, and seek righteousness. Seek righteousness. Seek righteousness. And seek meekness. It may be ye shall ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger, of the Lord's judgment. It says, seek righteousness. You know, if you are reading many of these uh, books uh, that they put out there in their bookshops, on the street corners, or whenever we go for program, all those people put all the books there. Those people are just marketing, you know, whatever. You do not know what's contained inside those books. And you see the beautiful cover. And therefore you buy. They tell you in all those books, they say, you don't need to try to be righteous. You're born again. And the righteousness of Christ is already splashed on you. Imputed unto you. It's given unto you. Whatever you do, whatever you don't do, whether you are personally righteous or not, they say, judicially, God has given it to you. And he counts you as righteous. You know what the word of God says? Yes, because you have been a sinner. And because you didn't know the Lord at all. When you come to the Lord, the only record and the only reckoning that can be given to you is the righteousness of Christ imputed unto you. But now there's another word. The righteousness will be imparted unto you. That's what he's saying here. There is practical righteousness. 
There is active righteousness. There is personal righteousness. There is behavioral righteousness. There is active righteousness in your life. It says, seek to be righteous. And Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then he says, and it's righteousness. He didn't say, don't worry about righteousness. I've given that to you already. I've imputed that to you already. At your point of being saved, at salvation, you are as righteous as you will ever be. Jesus didn't say that. He said, priority, the kingdom of God. Pursuit, righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And in that passage I read to you now, it says, we should seek his righteousness. Uh, look at this uh, wonderful, interesting verse in Jeremiah chapter 45. Jeremiah chapter 45, and I'm reading from verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 45, verse 5. Seekest thou great things for thyself? Seek them not. You see that there are many people, they do not understand the path to the blessings of God. And they say, what do I want to be? I want to be a star shining up there. Seekest thou great things for thyself, seek them not. Anytime you, maybe you are reading a particular whatever, material, whatever um, article, you say, that's what I want to be. How about the will of God? I say, this is what I want to be. How about what did God create you for? And what did he feed you for? That man is a doctor. If everybody in the world was a doctor, where would the engineer be? If everybody was an engineer in the world, where will the doctor be? If everybody was engineer or doctor, where will the tailors be? If everybody was a tailor, where will the cook be? He has created every one of us to balance up all the needs of humanity in the world. And so you cannot just say, I see that one, I'm going to be like that. I see that one, I'm going to be like that. It says, seek ye force, the kingdom of God. He knows what he created you for coming to the kingdom you get born again and get sanctified and surrender your soul your spirit your personality surrender everything to the lord and then the lord will make you what he has created you for somebody is saying amen over there and what the lord has planned for you from all eternity because known unto him and all this was before the foundation of the earth and what he has created you for he will give to you you know some people come to the church and as they look at the church they say okay i choose that i choose that and then if you say the lord is leading the pastor to say go and do this uh, pastor no it's covenant month i have covenant with god I have already chosen what I will be. Are you the one to choose what you will be? Or God will choose for you what he wants you to be. Everybody, what do you want to be? This one wants to be an apostle. The other one there wants to be an apostle. The other one, I am going to be an apostle. And the young people of this generation, what do you want to be? Apostle. Uh -huh. Where are the evangelists? And where are the pastors? Where are the teachers? I don't know, but we are all going to be apostles. And then, who are you going to have apostolic ministry when everybody is an apostle? Seek, seekest thou great things for thyself. Look at that verse 5. Seek them not. And it says, For behold, I will bring evil upon all flesh. Says the Lord, but thy life will I give unto thee. It says, If you will listen to me, and you will not seek great things for yourself, for yourself, for yourself. He says, I'm going to bless you beyond your expectation. He will do it in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 51. Isaiah chapter 51. I'm reading here from verses 1 and 2. Isaiah chapter 51. I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. Hacking to me, ye that follow after, what's the next word there? Righteousness. Hacking to me, ye that follow after righteousness. In all those books and all those evangelical preachers, you don't need righteousness. Christ has made you righteous. You don't need to follow after righteousness. Leave all that righteousness alone and just understand everybody is righteous enough. Uh -uh. The Bible says, Hacking unto me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock, whence ye are hewn, and to the and to the hole, out of the pit whence ye are deep. Look unto Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah, and that bear you, for I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. He said, he's going to show you the pattern. 
how Abraham sought after God, priority, that's God. Pursuit, that's righteousness. And I called him alone. He didn't copy other people. He didn't go after other people. And he just did what I wanted him to do. And I called him and I blessed him. And if you all follow that pattern of life of Abraham, he's going to bless you this year. And the blessings are going to multiply beyond your wildest dream in Jesus' name. Let me show you the example of this uh, one that sought after righteousness, that followed after righteousness. And God said, I called him and I blessed him. Look at Genesis chapter 13. Genesis chapter 13. I'm reading here from verse 5. Do you realize that this is the first book of the Bible? Before all the other uh, pieces of revelation came, this is the very first. And look at the attitude of this patriarch of Abraham. And the Lord is saying, look unto that Abraham. Because that's the one that began to talking to the Israelites. And he's saying, I called him and I blessed him. And if you will do the same, your priority shall be God. If you are going to be the same, your pursuit will be righteousness. Look at this. In Genesis chapter 13 and verse 5. It says in verse 5, And Lord also, which went with Abraham at floods and herds and tents, and the land was not able to bear them. And that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife, misunderstanding, and conflict between the headmen of Abraham's cattle and the headmen of Lord's cattle. And the Canaanites and the Perizzites dwelt then in the land. And Abraham said unto the Lord, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my headmen and thy headmen, for we are we be brethren. Have you noticed that? Anything you're seeking that you, know, you have to strive before you get it, that's not the will of God. That's not the way to our blessing. Anything you want, and you want it so much, you must strive with Abraham. You must strive with your neighbor. You must strive with a member of the church. You must strive with your husband. You must strive with your wife. You must strive with somebody before you can have them. That's not the will of God. It means that your salvation is not steady. Your salvation is not real. You might just be like Lord that will choose something for yourself. You might just be like Lord that eventually you might even lose everything. He lost everything in Sodom and Gomorrah. He even lost his life, became a pillar of salt. But here Abraham said, let's not strike. Let's not fight. Let's not uh, quarrel about anything. Material things of the world, landed property, or housing, or maybe it's a job, or it is this or that. Abraham said, we be brethren. There must be no strife. And then he says in verse 9, it's not the whole land before thee. So pray thyself. I pray thee for me. If thou wilt uh, go, if thou wilt take uh, the left hand, then I will go to the right. And if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lord lifted up his eyes. That's it. That's it. Those are the people, carnal people. Those are the people, unscriptural people. Those are the people, proud people. Those are the people, backsliding people. Those are the people, the people that put material things first. The people that put land and property first. The people that put money first. Money, money, money. Money. In the morning, money. In the afternoon, money. In the evening, no Bible study, money. Every time is money. That's what he put forth. And God is relegated to a far background in their lives. And they will be the losers for it. But look at this. And Lord lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan. That it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of, of the Lord, as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zohar. And Lord chose him all the plain of Jordan. And Lord journeyed east and they separated themselves, the, the one from the other. And Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan. And Lord dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent towards Sodom. But... The men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. That was not important to Lord. 
but I want his land. All I want is, you know, I, I need some grass that my cattle will be able to have enough. And I need property. I need this and that. Whether the people are sinners or not, that's not my problem. I can live in their midst and then I will still be all right. No, you cannot be all right. Look at verse 14. And the Lord said unto Abraham, and after that Lord was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes, look from the place where thou art, northward and southward and eastward and westward for all the land which thou seest to be when i give it unto thy seed forever you see that the blessing came back to abraham and the lord says look unto abraham and as you look unto abraham and you do like he has done i'll say all that is not important to me what's important to me is god first and then his righteousness it says it is that state of righteousness it will bless it is that state of holiness it will bless it is when you're pursuing that righteous life it says that is what it will bless i want you to look at this in uh, genesis chapter 20 genesis chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 3. genesis chapter 20 reading from verse 3 the lord will defend you if you, you don't have to defend yourself, you don't have to, you know, put all this force and this force. My wife, my wife, my wife, my husband, my husband, my husband. You know, he's uh, going too much uh, for, you know, all this leadership. They have meeting on Monday, they have meeting on Tuesday, they have meeting Wednesday, they have meeting on Thursday. And fight my husband, my husband. How oh, are we going to have a good marital life when my husband, my husband, hey, hey, hey. And be very careful so that you don't lose that husband. That husband belongs to God. Let your husband serve the Lord this year. I said, let your husband serve the Lord this year. My wife, my wife, my wife, let your wife serve the Lord. And you'll be the happiest man in the universe in Jesus' name. Look at this now in Genesis chapter 20, verse 3. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said unto him, Behold, Thou art but a dead man. For the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. What had happened here is this. In chapter 18 of Genesis, God promised Abraham and said, By this and next year, the child you're expecting will come. Laughter will come to your life. And I look at your face there. Where are you there? Laughter is coming. Joy is coming. That was chapter 18. And then they got to chapter 20. And because chapter 19 is talking about Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah being destroyed. Chapter 20 now came. And Abimelech looked at the wife of uh, Abraham and said, Ah, this will be a good addition to my family. Come. And then took that uh, Sarah. And the promise of God was there. That by this time next year, and before that next year came, and this is your year. Yeah. I said, this is your year. Before that uh, promise came to fulfillment, Abimelech took uh, Sarah. And then Abraham did not begin to pray, Oh God, oh God, my wife, my wife, my wife. She just, we didn't even hear about it. He just kept quiet and God will defend the defenseless. And the one that cannot take a lawyer, the one that cannot go to court, and the one that they tell you, go, go there. Before you get there, we have seen all the judges. Don't go anywhere. Before they get there, God will get there before them. And so God came to uh, Abimelech and said, you are a dead man. If you don't release that woman, I'm going to kill you. Because that woman is a special woman. Your wife is a special woman. Your children are special. And your husband is special. God will protect everyone in Jesus' name. Look at verse 4. And Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, will thou slay also a righteous?